Welcome to Pewter and Honey, a space where we explore the chambers of creativity to design in jewelry. We're going to take you on a trip to demonstrate the construction of some of our pieces as well as the popular pieces circulating in the industry. Good morning folks, today we're going to take you to the bench and dive right into the action with the making of a necklace. In the US, it's called the Arabic Bismarck. In the Caribbean, it's called the Spanish Link. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, we're going to make it from scrap. We have tools in check, torches in check, material collected. So without any further ado, let's go. You can see we have the scrap here already to be melted. Uh, we have our sawdust here. And here we are on the bench. So let's start this process. Okay, so now that we have all that material melted, let me take it to the mill. If you look closely at the mill, you realize that each groove gets smaller as we go down. Uh, when we mill the material, each groove decreases the size of the thickness of the material as we go further to the end. While it goes further to the end and decreases the thickness, the wire, the, uh, the length of the material, stretches out and becomes longer and longer into the form of wire. And this is what we are trying to accomplish here, to get wire. But for every three grooves, we are going to anneal the material so that it becomes soft again because if we continue all the way down, the metal, whatever metal it is, it becomes very hard and uh, cracks as you go too far down without annealing. So just keep that in note. So at this stage, I'm applying boric acid and alcohol to the wire. This prevents oxidization and also fire scale. We more prominently use this method during a um, silver smithing, but we can also use it in gold. And <clears throat> yeah, here we are about to continue annealing the wire. So now that we have milled the wire all the way through all the grooves in the mill down to the end, uh, we're going to stretch this wire even further uh, by the use of this device here. It's called a draw plate brand. It's a Thompson carbide draw plate, which is one of the better draw plates. It's more durable. The holes on the inside doesn't break. And if you look, there's holes all the way through which also decreases in size like the mill. The reason for that is each hole that it goes through, it stretches the wire longer and longer and longer as it goes down smaller until you reach the desired length that you want. First, what we're going to do is uh, find that desired hole that we need. So I believe... We're going to start at number four because it's already passing through this groove so we're going to start here but if you look it cannot make its way through because the end is too thick so what we're going to do is file a point so that the point comes through and when it comes through what we do we're going to pull draw that wire all the way through through each hole we need to actually know the length of the necklace that we're going to achieve. Each inch of necklace requires 10 inches of wire. The 
see we have uh, drawn the 210 inches of wire and this is the stage just before wrapping it around the mantle to make the links. At this point, I'm going to make a spacer that equally spaces the spring so that when we uh, make the links, the links will also be equally spaced. So this is a basic example. This is the example of the spring that we're going to use to create the links. So we're going to cut the spring in even portions so that we can create this, the uh, links for the chain. remember guys this is a larger version of the chain um, I'm doing it in silver so you can get a clearer picture of how I link each piece of spring together so it goes like this you slip the foot the edge the link inside there Actually, this is the idea we are looking to accomplish. This is all connected and if you look over here, detail, you're going to see that it forms an X all the way down the length on both sides. This side, if we turn here, we're going to see it on this side. Those X those X's that will form there are going to be the solder points where we are going to join each link on both sides. All right. So we fit our shares in between each link like that and we snip.
we snip. Then we snip. Then we're gonna move, we're gonna shift it to this side and do the same thing here. Fit it in between, snip. Right. Let me give you that up close view. This is a bigger necklace actually. So if you look there, you can see where I chipped the ends off. It's smooth anyway. After soldering this side, we're gonna do the same exact thing and chip and chip all the way down. Like that. flip and we chip again so it's a lot of cutting after soldering right that there and this is what it's going to look like after chipping Hey folks, this is our final product and please subscribe to Pewter and Honey for future content.